My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast, and one of them named Clopas said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Our chief priests and the rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And beside all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they indeed had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, He interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven. And those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Father Leon and Father Sibby have graciously allowed me to speak at all the Masses this week, and I'd like to talk to you about a spiritual retreat that we're going to be offering here at St. Gregory the Great in May and in June. This retreat is based on a book by Father Michael Gately, a priest from the Congregation of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. The goal of this retreat is to consecrate ourselves to Jesus through Mary. To consecrate oneself to Jesus through Mary is known as a Marian consecration. This sounds scary or complicated, maybe even difficult. It is not. Maybe you've never heard of it and think that it's something new that we're doing in the church. It is not. In his book, True Devotion to Mary, St. Louis de Montfort wrote wrote about preparing oneself to consecration to Mary. He wrote this book in 1712. 
The book was lost until 1842. Thus, Marian consecration has been with the church since the 1800s. St. Louis de Montfort's book has had a pro profound effect on the life of the church, although I have to admit to you that I didn't know about St. Louis de Montfort until I entered seminary and came here to St. Gregory the Great. Nevertheless, his impact has been immense. Many, many popes have read his writings, including Pope John Paul II, who was greatly influenced by the writings of St. Louis de Montfort, both before his pontificate and after it. So what does consecration to Jesus through Mary mean? On the cross, Jesus said to the disciple John, his beloved apostle, behold your mother. At that moment, Mary became the mother of the church. She becomes our mother, just as Jesus is our brother. And the role of a mother is to give birth, to feed, to nurture, and to help her children grow up. Mary's role is to give birth, spiritual birth, to Christians, the adopted children of the Father. In short, Mary's job is to help us grow in holiness. Her mission is to help us become saints. With her fiat, at the Annunciation, she says, Behold, I am a handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. In union with the Holy Spirit, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary is given the task of helping you grow in the Christian life. Mary is the disciple par excellence. She is the model of discipleship for all Christians. She unites her will at the Annunciation with the Father's will completely and totally, just as we are called to do. Mary shows us the way. So what is Marian consecration all about? Marian consecration basically means giving Mary our full permission, or as much permission as we can, to complete her motherly task in us, which is to form us to be more Christ-like. Thus, by consecrating ourselves to Mary, each of us is saying to her, Mary, I want to be a saint. I know that you also want me to be a saint, and that it's your God-given mission to form me into one. So Mary, at this moment, on this day, I freely choose to give you my full permission to do your work within me with the help of the Holy Spirit. Why are we offering this retreat? This retreat has been done in our parish in small groups for a number of years. Some of the people who have done this retreat are going to be in the back of church to give you more information. There is a full page in the bulletin talking about the various opportunities you'll have to do this retreat. Those who have done this retreat have had their lives transformed. They have, it is a great opportunity for each of us to grow in our faith. It will allow you to for, more fully enter into your faith. If you take the risk of doing this retreat, you will grow in your faith and become more active living it out in the world today. Are you worried? Are you anxious about your family? your kids, your grandkids, your job or your health? This retreat will solve none of your problems. Let me repeat that. This retreat will solve none of these problems, but it will give you a sense of peace in your life that will help you deal with them. It will allow you to experience a sense of calm in the storm of life. People who have done this retreat have experienced a transformation in their lives. Their faith has been set on fire. Doing this retreat will allow you to realize that you are not alone in your struggles. You will share your life experience and your faith experience with others. And surprisingly, you will find that they have similar difficulties in life. You can hide in the darkness all alone, or you can walk with someone holding a candle to light your way. You are never alone. You are not alone. There are many themes that run through our gospel passage today, the road to Emmaus, but it should be abundantly clear to you that despite what the two disciples thought was the end of Jesus' story, God did not abandon Jesus on the cross, nor will he abandon you in your struggles. You are not alone. You are never alone. This spiritual retreat 
will open your eyes to the power of prayer. You will see that the little things that change in your lives ultimately can make a huge difference in the world, in your world, and in the world at large. I'm confident that this spiritual retreat will change your life. It will draw you closer to the church and to the community of Christians here at St. Gregory the Great. I know from the people who have taken this retreat how much it has impacted their lives. And if you take that leap of faith and enter into this retreat, it can change your life as well. God bless and thank you.